Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Airlift Wireless One air compressor system. Here on our 2021 Ford F-150. So what is a air compressor system and why do we need one? Well, for starters, an air compressor system, it's going to be used to supplement our air helper springs. Whether we have Firestone or Airlift, this system is compatible with both of those brands. So when we have our air helper springs, we're going to be using those when we're towing or hauling heavy loads so we have additional support. But usually that requires access to an external air compressor in order to fill the bags. So if we find ourselves to be towing frequently or we're towing different loads where we're constantly adjusting the PSI, we don't always wanna to have to be dependent on that external air compressor. Therefore, adding one on board to the truck here that you can adjust on the fly is gonna make your towing experience that much easier when you have the air helper springs. The wireless air isn't the only compressor system on the market. There's actually quite a few different options. However, this one here is definitely our favorite here at E-Trailer, especially among the installers. And the reason being that it's wireless. Now, the benefits that a wireless air compressor system has over a wired one is mainly that we're not running airlines in and out of the cab to a manual gauge. Now, most of the time, those manual gauges require drilling into our dash, room that we just simply don't have as well here on these newer trucks. It's also going to introduce a bunch of extra lines into the system, which can create other potential for leaks. So having the wireless system here cuts down on all that. There's no drilling into the dash. There's no try to find the space to mount the manual gauges. And there's no extra lines we have to worry about leaks. So the wireless route is definitely the one to go in my opinion. We talked about how easy this is to adjust. Now let's go ahead and show you that. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to download Airlift's Wireless Air app. Now this is a free app that's available on both Apple and Google Play stores. So no matter which phone you have, you're going to be able to download this app. And again, it is free, so it's not going to cost us any money. But once we have the app on our phone, we can go ahead and show you how to compare, or sorry, how we compare the system to our phone so we can operate it. When we first get into the app, we need to go ahead and pair our specific compressor here to this phone. In order to do that, it's very easy. First of all, we need to do this within, within a couple minutes of inserting the fuse in line for our compressor. So once we have that fuse, we need to jump over to our app here. You're gonna to go to settings. You're gonna to go to devices. And then down here, we should see the option for our compressor. I believe ours was labeled 0322. It was a series of numbers and you should only really have one popping up. So it should be fairly obvious. But we'll go ahead and click that to pair it. And then once it is paired, it'll bring up this screen here. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're actually going to adjust the pressure that it allows us to fill the airbags to because the preset is gonna be a max of 35 PSI. Now, most airbags you're gonna be using those have a much larger PSI, therefore we need to go ahead and adjust the settings accordingly. So we're gonna to go to settings, settings again, and then we're gonna go down to airbag type. And the factory setting is the ride control, which has a max of 35 PSI. Most of you guys are gonna be using these with the load lifter bags. Therefore, we need to select that option and allow us to put in more air into our airbags. So once we have that, here is gonna be the main screen. Now, it's very easy to use this, guys. We have our main up and down here. So this is actually gonna control both bags. So if we hit up on this, it's gonna adjust the PSI evenly in each bag. Go ahead and show you that now. You should hear the compressor kick on as well. So I can hear the compressor kicking on. Let's just go ahead and put 20 PSI in there. So that compressor is gonna run until both of our bags have 20 PSI in them, and then it's going to shut off. We can also see our real-time adjustments up here above, L for left, R for right. And we're ready to deflate the bags here. We just simply hit that button there. You can hear the air escaping now. And the lowest we can go is five. Now the reason that is, we need to make sure that there's five PSI in the airbags at all time, because that increases the chance that we don't have any issues with deforming. So we've showed you how to adjust them both together. Now we can show you how to adjust them individually. So if we have some off-center loads in our truck bed here, we can actually adjust each side individually by just simply hitting the arrows on the sides here. So if I wanted 10 PSI in that bag and 9 PSI in that bag, I could easily just pre-select each airbag individually. And the same goes for deflating them. I can deflate them one at a time as well. 
So the majority of applications you're going to be using it as a single path system, which is adjusting both bags with one button, but we can also use it as a dual path system where we can adjust each airbag individually. Another great feature of our system here that's built right into the main screen is that we have our presets. So we have three different presets here. The factory preset for the first one is going to be 5 PSI for each airbag. So when we're done towing at the end of the day, we're ready to just use our truck to drive as normal, just driving around town and want to go get a bite to eat. We need to decrease the pressure from the airbag so we don't have a rough ride. So in order to do that, we could just simply hit our first preset there, double tap that. Now we already have the minimum preset there, so it's not going to adjust. But this is an easy way when we're done towing for the day to set our ride back to factory. We also have two other options here we can use for two different trailers. You could also adjust the first one if you wanted to use that for a different trailer, depending on how many loads or trailers we may have. But it's pretty easy to do. Let's say we have a trailer that we tow a lot and we know what PSI that we like in our airbags in order for that trailer to ride comfortably and our vehicle to have support. So we'll just simply hit that settings button and you can easily adjust both the left and right pressure. That way when we get in, we couple to that trailer, we can easily just hit that button and it's gonna fill up to our set PSI. So another feature of this system here that we can access from our mobile device, if we go to the settings tab and then we go to the troubleshooting section, if we have any issues with our system there, let's say there's an air with the compressor or there's an air with our manifold that's causing us to lose air from our system or causing the compressor not to turn on, we're gonna get an error code here that's gonna be displayed here. It's gonna let us know what that error code is and then we can also look up possible ways to fix that. So there's gonna be some built-in integrated diagnostic testing here for the system just to give you peace of mind that your system is gonna be up and working correctly. So in regards to device compatibility, we talked a little about we talked a little bit about being able to use either an Android or an Apple product, but we don't have to use a cellular phone either. If we have an iPad or a tablet that we want to use, we can certainly use that as well. I'd also like to point out that you don't have to have an active data or internet connection or in order to be able to use this. You will need that in order to download the app, but once you have the app on your phone, you don't need any sort of data or internet to be able to use the device. It works strictly off of Bluetooth. In regards to installation, we touched a little bit about this earlier, but this kit here is truly my favorite. I would use this personal one on my truck, and if I had it any other way, this would be the only one I install. And the reason for that is it's wireless, therefore, again, we don't have to have any extra wires or lines in our dash here, and everything is going to be integrated into one mount, which just makes things a breeze for installation. This kit here really doesn't take much time at all to install, and it is definitely my favorite compressor system on the market. And a lot of my fellow installers love this one as well, just due to how easy it is, how easy it is to install, and how well it performs. So this is what our compressor looks like installed on the vehicle. Now that's one of the reasons why I really like this kit in particular, because everything is integrated into one mount. We have a bracket here that houses our compressor and the manifold slash ECU. Everything is integrated into this one nice convenient package that's very easy to install. Now, in regards to actually attaching this assembly to the vehicle, most of the time you're going to come to the outside of the frame rail here, and in most cases you can use the included U-bolt that comes in the kit for a no-drill installation. This F-150, however, the frame is a little bit too tall for that U-bolt, so we just had to drill two holes, but that's it. There's no further modifications required to mount it. So everything's pretty basic in regards to our connections. We have two airlines coming from the bottom of the manifold. One of those goes to each bag. On the bottom here, we have our wiring harness that goes up into the engine bay for our power ground and our remote settings. And then at the top, we have a wire that comes over and goes to our remote filter. So those are pretty much all the connections you need to make here. Everything else is gonna be already made for you and again, integrated into this one mount. Therefore, the installation is very simplified and it doesn't require near as much modifications as some of the other kits you may find with the analog displays or even some of the other wireless kits. This one here is definitely the best option because it doesn't require as much modifications to the vehicle and it's super easy to install. So the first step of our installation, we need to find a place to mount our compressor and manifold. Everything's integrated into one. Now, a good rule of thumb here is to check which side of the vehicle your battery is on. We're working on an F-150 here, so the battery is gonna be on the passenger side. Therefore, I'm gonna be routing this, or I'm gonna be installing this on the passenger side frame rail. Now we also need to pay attention to how far forward or how far rear we're installing this. 
I recommend sort of going in the middle there. We can't go too far back because we have a certain amount of length on our wiring that we really don't want to extend. And we can't go too far forward because then that's going to leave us shortages with our airline tubing. So the middle of the frame on either side, depending on which side your battery is on. So now in order to actually attach the manifold here to the frame, we need to pay attention to the orientation because we can't install it to where the airlift logo is facing the ground. So you couldn't install it like that. The ideal orientation is going to be like this with our wiring harness pointed down. So now I would say the majority of applications, we're just going to simply be using the U-bolt that comes in your kit here. And basically this just goes around the back side of the frame and it clamps around there. And there's going to be two holes that are going to line up perfectly on this bracket. We could just use the included nuts and U-bolt to secure it to the frame that way. Most of your Dodgers and Chevys are going to use this method. However, the Fords, as you're going to see here, the frame is just a bit too tall here for our U-bolt. It won't actually make it around the frame. Therefore, we need to drill into the frame, but only two holes in order to attach our unit. So these, cut, these next couple steps here could vary depending on what model we have. Since we're working on a Ford here, we're going to have to go ahead and drill into the frame. If we're going to be drilling, we need to go ahead and line up our marks. Now we can actually hold the unit on there, but it is rather heavy. So we can hold it up on there with one hand and sort of do our best to mark out the center of the holes with another. But you can actually rip out this center page in the instructions here because this is an exact one to one template. So these two red holes here are the ones that we're going to be drilling. So I'm just going to hold this up to the frame here. We could even tape it there if we wanted to, but I think just holding it with our hand there and then I'm going to come back with a spring loaded center punch. And I'm just going to mark the center of both of those holes. And if I take that off, I can see our two little marks in the frame. It's kind of be, going to be hard for you guys to see those. So I think I'll come back with a paint marker and highlight those a little bit more. So now I'm going to go ahead and take a quarter inch drill bit. And we're going to drill through both of the holes that we've marked. So now that we have our holes drilled, I'm going to go ahead and take the compressor assembly here, set it into position, and then we're going to be securing it with these self-tapping bolts that come in your kit. So in order to get these started, I'm going to go ahead and put one of our bolts on a half inch socket drive here. I'm going to begin applying pressure and tightening it, which is going to form the threads into the frame. So we've got the bottom one in. We're not tightening it all the way down. We're going to go ahead and stick our top one on. I don't think you guys are going to be able to see that, but we're just going to be repeating that same process there. Just applying pressure into the self-tapping screw there, self-tapping bolt rather, whatever you want to call it, to form the threads into the frame. Now you want to leave that bottom one loose temporarily because we need a little bit of room because chances are we didn't drill our hole perfectly straight, but the brackets or the holes rather on our bracket are oblong. So they give us a little bit more room for margin of error. So once we have the threads formed in both the top and bottom holes, we can go ahead and snug down both of these self tapping bolts here. Now I say snug because we need to make sure we don't over tighten them because if we over tighten them, it's pretty easy to strip the hole out. So you're going to install it. We're going to tighten it all the way down. I can see here I'm getting some resistance. I'm just going to do another eighth to a quarter of a turn and that's going to be enough. So we've got the bottom one tight. Now we'll finish tightening the top one. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to run our remote filter. So this is basically a filter for the air compressor to take in air, but we obviously need to make sure that it's just not going to be sucking in water and dirt if it's raining. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the airline tubing in our kit. There's actually going to be two different kinds. One of them is a lot stiffer than the other one. You can see here, this one's much more pliable. This is the one we're going to be using for the remote filter installation. But we're going to take one end here. We're going to attach this to the barb fitting coming from the top of our compressor, which due to the way we have it mounted, it's going to be pointed directly up towards the cap. So it's actually pretty easy just to line that up and just force it over the nipple there. Once we feel for it, we should be able to shove that down on there for a nice and secure connection. 
So now we're just sort of mocking up locations to install our filter here. And as we said, we need to make sure it's sort of subjected from the elements. Now, there isn't a ton of good places on this vehicle and I really don't want to drill any more holes into the frame. There is, however, a hole here on the side of our bracket for the air compressor. It's not quite the size we need, but it's a good pilot hole that we can enlarge to 3 8 of an inch. And then we should be able to attach our air filter to that just like so. And then we'll obviously be able to make our connection here by just trimming that line. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take a 3 8 inch drill bit and I'm just going to enlarge that hole. We need to be careful because there is an air line behind there. So now that we have our hole drilled, I'm going to take our air filter. I'm going to screw on the barbed inlet that comes in your kit. And now I'm just going to sort of gauge out how much air line we're going to need here. And I'm going to go ahead and trim the rest off, making sure we cut as squarely as possible. Now I'm going to attach that end of our cut line to the barbed fitting. And we'll just simply attach the filter there to the hole we made in the side of our bracket. So just like that. And now we're ready to run our airline. So we're going to take the bundle of airline that you get in your kit. And again, this one is the one that's a little bit harder. The softer one is for the remote filter. So we're going to take the blunt cut end, the factory blunt cut end. And we're going to attach that to the number one port here on the bottom of the manifold. This is a push to connect. So we just push it up and then pull down to lock it in place. Now we're going to take the other end of this. And we're going to mount this. We're going to route this rather to the left side air spring, otherwise known as the driver air spring. So once we get it over there, we're gonna go ahead and cut it off. We'll do that same thing for the port number two here. And then once we get both of those ran, we'll show you the route we took. So you can see we have our airline tubings ran. Now we wanna make sure that we don't have too much of an angle coming directly out of the manifold. When we spray these fittings down later, we'll be able to see if that's too excessive, but I don't think it is, but we just need to be careful that you don't have too much of an angle because then it can create leaks there at the fittings. But now we're just going to follow both of our airline tubings down. We have it zip tied to some points on the frame here. And then we're going to come up and over that cab mount there. So this is a cab mount we came behind there. And then we have some bed mounts that we come up and over there as well. And now that's going to be pretty much right above the exhaust. So you want to be careful, but we're just going to continue running it above the frame. And we'll jump onto the inside there so we can show you where the wires come out. So right around this point here, you should see our two wires, or our airlines rather. We have one that's just going to go straight. This is the one coming from the port number two. It's going to go straight to the airbag. We went ahead and tucked it behind the U-bolt there so we don't have to worry about issues with heat from our exhaust. And then if we come up here to the other one, we actually used a couple of ring clamps and just drilled those into the bottom of that bed support there to again provide more support for our wire so it doesn't come down and make contact with our exhaust. And we have a zip tie here for the handle coming off our gas tank. And then again, just leave ourselves a little bit of slack. We went ahead and attached it directly to the fitting on the top of our bag. So now we should have some airline left over here. So what we can do is if you take the T fittings that come in your kit, we can actually splice into each of those lines and then run another wire to the rear here that we can mount to the manual inflation valves that came with your airbags. So this isn't required, but it is an extra little step you can do in case you ever lose power to your air compressor, you'll still be able to inflate your airbags. So we went ahead and ran our manual inflation valves. And again, this is completely optional, but if you'd like to see how we've done it, you can take a look here at the rear bumper. This cross beam for the bumper is where we mounted the manual inflation valve. And we actually use the airline that comes with the airlift kit. Uh, you will have some left over from your air compressor, but it may not be enough. And these already have the fittings molded on. So we just simply attached it to a pre-drilled hole in the vehicle. If you want to choose a different location, the license plate area is a common one. You can just drill a couple holes and mount it there. But we just have the airline riding back up and over the cross members for the spare tire. They're just kind of up there. And then on this side, we need to be careful because the exhaust, but we're just have it running over here. And if we look here on the frame directly above our bag, you should be able to see that T fitting that we pointed out earlier. I just cut off a three or four inch section that goes to the air fitting. One of them goes up to the compressor and the other end of this is obviously gonna go back to the manual inflation valve. So we went ahead and did that on this side and then just repeat those same few steps over on the other side of the vehicle. So now that we have all of our airlines ran, we're ready to go ahead and apply power to our compressor. 
So we're going to take the wiring harness here that has several wires bundled together. One end is going to have the square connector and this is going to simply plug into the bottom of the manifold. So we're going to push that up until we hear it lock into place and then we're going to press up on that white locking tab and that prevents the connector from coming loose even if we press the button. So once we've got that plugged in what we're going to do is you can see we have two wires coming from this main strain here. We have a black wire and a red wire. We're actually going to attach these to the two wires coming from our compressor. We have that same black and red wire so we're just simply going to be color matching. We do have a little bit of extra wire so I'm going to go ahead and just cut off that excess now and we're going to attach these wires using the yellow heat shrink buck connectors that come in your kit. So we'll go ahead and show you one of those connections there. We'll just repeat that same one for the other wire. And once I do get these crimped on, I'm going to come back with a heat gun here and seal our connections. But we got that one done, as we said check to make sure they're tight. So now I'm going to go ahead and do that same thing on the other wire and then we'll use a heat gun to seal up the butt connectors. So now that we have our two connections sealed up, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some electrical tape. I'm just going to tie up these wires here to the existing wiring harness and then I think I might actually use some wire loom too because we do have to run this on the outside of the frame rail so we'd rather not see the color of these wires. But basically we're just going to do a little housekeeping here, make everything look nice. And then we're going to begin routing this main harness from the compressor here up into the engine bay. So we'll go ahead and do that now and then we'll show you what it looks like and how we routed it. So we've got our wiring harness routed to the front of the vehicle now, not quite in the engine bay yet. Here you can see we just used some electrical tape to tape up some of the wires for the first couple feet or so. We have a zip tie here securing it to the bracket. Then we come up and over the body mount. And here's where we use that wire loom. Keep in mind this doesn't actually come with just pretty standard wire loom. We're just using this to hide the wire so it looks a little bit better. But we're going to have all these various holes in the frame here. I've used a couple of these to secure a zip tie to hold the wiring harness to the frame. And you can see we'll just trace it. We have another point here that I used a zip tie to secure to the frame and then we came up and over this forward most cab mount and then I just have it routed down through here just like this for now because we're going to go up top in the engine bay there we're going to feed a pull wire down so we can show you how to get the rest of the wiring harness into the engine bay. So you can see our pull wire here and basically what we did we just took a piece of airline tubing and we shoved this down through the engine bay and if we look down in there we want to stay close to the wheel well as we can. Therefore, we need to be on the outside of the frame rail because if we look down in there to the right side of the frame rail, we have our exhaust and to the left side of the frame rail, we have open and clear space. So you want to make sure that you route it on the outside of the frame so we don't have to worry about any issues with heat from our exhaust. But I've got the airline ran underneath the vehicle here. I used a zip tie so we don't pull it back through. Now we'll go back underneath tie our wires to that airline tubing, then we'll come back on top, pull the airline through, bringing our wires along with it. So we've got our airline tubing underneath the vehicle here. I'm just going to take the wires that we left off with earlier. And as I said, I'm just going to tape them to this airline tubing, get them on there nice and secure. I do recommend using electrical tape for this. And once we get them taped on there, I'm just going to go to the top of the engine bay and I'm going to simply pull our wires through. So now that we have our wires in the engine bay here, we can begin separating them out. So I'm going to actually take a razor knife here. I'm going to cut away some of the electrical tape that they applied for us because we're going to be shortening our wires here. We don't need as much as they give us. So just be careful not to nick the wires there. Now we're going to do that for a few more of these. And now we can begin making our connections. So we have them routed next to the battery here. So what we're going to do is the first wire we're going to connect is our power wire. 
That's gonna be this red wire here. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna trim this one, cut it about right there. Take our wire strippers. Crimp on a buck connector. And then on the other side of that buck connector, we're going to attach our fuse holder. Once we get that on there, the other side of this, we're going to be attaching a ring terminal. So again, all these connections here are provided in your kit. You don't have to worry about going out and getting these. And once I have that on there, the fuse doesn't come pre-installed, but it's a good thing just to go ahead and check, make sure it's not inserted here. Because what we're gonna do next is, we're gonna unveil the positive terminal on our battery. So once we reveal the positive terminal, we're gonna take an 11 millimeter socket. And we're gonna remove this nut here. Be careful not to use that or lose that. Now we're gonna take the ring terminal. I'm gonna attach it to the stud there. And then we'll re-secure our nut. So now that we have the red wire hooked up, we're gonna take our black wire. That's gonna be for the ground. So we're gonna route it over to the ground post, just sort of mapping out how much I need to cut off. Trim that. And we're gonna take this other butt connector that comes in your kit here. Looks like this one here. We're gonna crimp that onto this black wire. And then we're going to attach it to the negative battery terminal. The negative battery terminal nut is a different size. This is actually a 10 millimeter for that. So we're gonna switch over to our 10 millimeter socket. And we're gonna move that nut there. And we'll just simply attach our negative wire to that stud. And there we have it. So now we should have one final wire left to connect and that's this pink wire here. Now previously on these kits you didn't actually have to hook this up, but now they do call for this wire to be hooked up regardless. So it used to be just an optional turn on um, whenever you got in the vehicle and woke up the ignition, it would wake up the compressor and adjust the PSI accordingly. But again, this is actually required now, so we need to hook this up to a keyed ignition source. And what that means is basically a circuit that only gets power when you turn on the ignition. So it doesn't need to have constant power, it only needs to have power when you put your keys in the ignition and turn on the vehicle. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna turn our attention to this fuse box here, which is just directly behind the battery. We're gonna begin testing each of these fuses. I'm obviously gonna look at the fuse box diagram to see which ones are a good candidate, but we're gonna be testing each of those fuses with a circuit tester to see if we can find one that's keyed so we can hook up our pink wire. So I'll go ahead and remove that cover, just like that, and now, I'll go ahead and find a couple that I think are gonna work for us and then we can begin testing with the circuit tester. So in order to test this out, we're gonna be using a circuit tester. I just have the lead hooked to our negative battery terminal. Now I've already identified a good fuse I think we can use to test it. If we look down in here, it's gonna be fuse number eight in your diagram and it's gonna be that reddish 10 amp fuse. So what we need to do is, I'm going to be probing one of those terminals there. I'm gonna have someone in the truck, that way they can start it on our command. And we should see the test light light up when it starts, and then when you shut the truck off, it should shut off. However, a lot of these circuits are delayed, meaning they don't shut off as soon as you start or stop the truck. There is a little bit of a time frame between them. So we can go ahead and have our friend now go ahead and start up the truck, please. Right there, we can see the test light coming on. Now if we were to shut off the truck, it should shut off, but again, it's a little bit of a delayed reaction. So we can go ahead and turn it off, please. There we go, now we can see our test light shut off. So we know that is a keyed circuit, and we can use this for our pink wire. So we've got our fuse pulled out here. Now what we're gonna do is, you're gonna get a couple of these different little copper fuse splices that come in your kit. We're gonna be taking the smaller one, we're gonna be taking one of the legs of the fuses, or the fuse rather, and we're gonna stick it through that bottom slot in that quick splice connector. 
And once we've done that, we can go ahead and reinsert our fuse into the same position that we removed it from previously. It's gonna take a little bit more force since you are adding some more material there. But it should go back in without too much of an issue. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the included fuse holder that comes in your kit, and depending on which fuse tap we used, we're gonna go ahead and attach a spade terminal that corresponds with that fuse splice. So in this particular case, we're gonna be using this blue one here. Once we have that on there, this is actually gonna go on to the top terminal there. Just like that. And the other side of this is gonna to attach to our pink wire. And we're gonna be connecting these two using the blue butt connector that comes in your kit. Make sure that's nice and tight. Now we'll go ahead, take our three amp fuse, install it into the inline fuse holder. We'll close that up and then we're gonna be reinstalling the cover for our fuse block. And then don't forget, we have one other fuse here, which is the 15 amp one that goes in line to our compressor. So in order to close the fuse box there with your wire running through there, you are gonna have to take out a little notch of the material just on the side there. You can see our wire passing through and that's the material that we removed from the fuse box. As you can see now, it's nice and sealed there with our wire still going through. So now that we have everything hooked up, what we wanna do is we wanna pressurize the system. So go ahead and pair it to the mobile app on your phone and inflate each of the airbags. I usually recommend around 50 PSI for our test. But then we're gonna spray down each of our fittings here to make sure we don't have any leaks. So I don't see any leaks here at the manifold. Now I'm gonna go back to our two airbags. I can hear a slight hissing noise, so I suspect we do have a leak there. So we'll need to go ahead and fix that. But let's go ahead and see if we can try to find where that happened. So I'll spray down the passenger side there and I can see some bubbles forming at the top there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that line and I'm gonna recut it. Chances are the cut was just a little crooked and that's probably what's forming those leaks. So I'm gonna remove that air line and I'm gonna recut it to hopefully remedy the leaking issue. But we still have another fitting over on the passenger side. Looks like we have another leak there as well. So that's fine, these are very easy to fix. It's a good thing to get them now. That way we don't have to worry about it later down the road. So we just deflated all the air from the system I removed the airline from that push to connect. I recut the airline and inserted it. As you can see now, we have the system pressurized again. Go ahead and spray it down once more. You can see we no longer have that leak. So they are pretty easy to fix in most cases. And now that we've fixed all of our leaks, that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Airlift Wireless One Air Compressor System here on our 2021 Ford F-150.